Hello and welcome back everyone. We're doing another 100 days in Terraria, but this time it's going to be in hardcore, which means that if I die, then it's game over. My character gets deleted and also the world as well. To make things even harder, I chose master mode, the hardest difficulty in the game. I don't know how many tries it took, but it was a lot. There were times where I was super close to dying. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Also, if you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you guys could drop a like, comment, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks everyone, and enjoy the video. So starting off on day 1, the most important thing to do first is to get wood, so I chopped a few trees down. I traveled to the desert and collected some cacti to make a full set of armor and tools. I then traveled to the jungle, and there were so many mobs, I almost died. I was drowning and I was also poisoned, to the point where I had only 7 HP left. I went underground and I found a tree that had a chest inside which contained a mace, which is a really good weapon early on. I teleported back home because traveling down in the jungle with only 100 HP is very dangerous. On day 2, I started making my house, but I didn't want to make anything simple like a box or anything similar to that. So I decided to make a sphere house. After finishing the bottom of the house with wood, I started replacing it with glass. I ran out of glass, so I went back to the desert to get some more sand. Also, shout out to the person who told me that there was a ruler tool in the game. It helped me with building a lot. I finished the outer layer of my house on day 3. After that, I started mining down towards hell. On day 4, after mining for a bit, I upgraded my cactus pickaxe to a gold one to make mining a lot faster. I also made a silver plate body and an iron helm as well. I wanted to take a more slower approach in this video because it is hardcore and the goal is to survive all 100 days, not try to beat the game in 100 days. So I gathered some more sand for glass to make my house a bit thicker. I then made a house within the sphere and I also added in some blue yellow pattern made from topaz and sapphire blocks that I didn't know that you can make. On day 6, I kept mining down the elevator to find more life crystals because I desperately needed more health to not get one shot by monsters. After mining for a bit, I did a little touch up on my house. I went back underground and I found two more life crystals. I also found a skeleton merchant that sold Splunkler glow sticks to help me find treasure. While I was mining, a giant shelly fell on top of me and almost killed me. Thankfully, I had the recall potion so I teleported instantly. I then traveled to the ocean, hoping to find something useful like the water walking boots, but I only got the inner tube and also some breathing reeds. At least the inner tube had armored on it, so that was okay. After reaching hell, I immediately went back home because I did not want to deal with these monsters. They did so much damage to me and I was not ready for them. At night, there was a blood moon and I wanted to kill the monsters because I wanted the money trove. But I also had to be careful because... Yeah, well, that happened. Um, here is where I almost died. Look at my health. 1 HP. I got so lucky right there. It would have been over for me. On day 9, I started making some houses for the NPCs. I even added some lava to make things even spicier. On day 10, I went underground to look for some more light crystals and I also found some better accessories along the way. On day 11, I drank a gravitation potion to look for some sky islands. After that, I went to the underground desert to look for some more life crystals and I also found a really cool item that I've never seen before. It basically summons a snake that acts like a rope. Later on, I found some feral claws and I decided to go the melee class. 
I figured I was ready to fight Eye of Cthulhu because I had 380 health. I pretty much just used grenades for this one, but later on I did end up using just melee weapons only. I have to be really careful that I don't grenade myself because grenades do a lot of damage. After getting it to its second phase, I was a bit scared because I didn't really have any boots to outrun it whenever it dashes. This fight pretty much depended on my positioning and also how well I can use my grapple. When it got to its last phase, I started freaking out. I was just throwing bombs, grenades, just everywhere. I didn't care if it hit me or not, I just wanted to kill it as soon as possible. And thankfully I did. From days 12 to 16, I found a really cool item. It's called a magic conch, and it acts like a magic mirror, but it only teleports you to each side of the ocean. And it's actually really useful to save time. I then fought the king slime, but I had to take out most of the parts because it just took forever to kill it. I only had an enchanted boomerang and you know how weak that thing is so yeah. It was time for an upgrade so I drank a gravitation potion and found a star fairy on a sky island. I also found a pair of wings to replace my lucky horseshoe. I killed the king slime one more time to get the slime now. I then had to fight off the Goblin army, but I wasn't strong enough, so I let the lava do all the work. From day 17 to 20, I found the Goblin Tinker while mining, and I bought the rocket boots from him, and also the workshop. I also built an arena for Skeletron, but I wasn't going to fight it just yet. On day 21, I built an arena for the Eater of Worlds. I broke the third Shadow Orb to get started with the fight. While I was fighting it, it kind of despawned on me because I think I was too high or something. So I had to break another Shadow Orb to get it spawned again. So I spawned the Eater of Worlds again and this boss was just like really easy. With the slime mount and also the star theory, I pretty much didn't have to worry about taking any damage, contact damage. I was just bouncing off of its body with the mount, and the star theory just got rid of all the projectiles that was coming towards me. The projectile that the star theory does is also really nice because it can just pass through the entire body of the boss. After killing the Eater of Worlds, I made the full shadow armor set, and also I went to underground to find better accessories. I figured it was about time to fight Skeletron, but I was wrong. I barely did any damage to it, so I pretty much had to teleport home and get better at weapons. From days 29 to 35, I went searching for something that could be of any use to me, but there wasn't really much I could upgrade on. But then I realized I could just go down to hell and start mining some hellstone to upgrade to molten armor, so that's what I did. After collecting enough hellstone, I made the full molten armor set as well as some weapons and tools. I then made more houses for more NPCs to spawn. On the night of day 36, I fought Skeletron again, and this time it went a lot faster. The Flamerang was doing work.
So after killing both of its arms, I found that the easiest way to dodge its attacks is to just fly around it. After killing Skeletron, I went down into the dungeon, but I realized I wasn't ready for it yet, so I had to teleport back home. I tried making a money show farm, but there was a problem. Obviously the dripplers were flying and they weren't actually touching the lava, so I pretty much just took that away and uh, yeah, I started building my castle. After finishing the outer layer, I realized that it looked like complete doo-doo, so uh, I pretty much just took everything down. I went back to the dungeon, and I killed a dungeon slime for a golden key, and I used that key to open one of the chests, and I got a shadow key. Having the shadow key, I went back down to hell, and I started opening up some of the shadow chests. So the next boss I had to fight is obviously the Wall of Flesh, and this had to be the most important one out of them all. If I messed up this boss fight, then it's pretty much game over. So I built a really long bridge. Long enough to the point where I didn't have to worry about running out of blocks to run on. On day 40, I did a little bit of fishing. I then started the boss fight. And there are a few things to worry about. If I tried teleporting back home, then it would mean instant death. If I got too close to the wall itself, then it might grab onto me and throw me underneath the lava. So I had to attack it from a distance, and the perfect weapon for that is the Star Fairy. I also took some extra precautions and placed some campfires and heart lanterns across the platform. a huge load of stress just went off of my chest. But now I'm gonna have to worry about the hard mode monsters because those guys are going to do a lot of damage. I opened the treasure bag hoping to get some melee stuff but unfortunately I didn't get any. I went down to corruption to break some altars to spawn in some hard mode ores. From days 41 to 55 I mined a lot of cobalt ore to make the full set of armor, because I needed upgrades as soon as possible. I then mined some Orichalcomore. I thought about making the armor set, but I figured I'd just mine some titanium. While I was mining, I found a hollowed mimic and I tried to kill it because I really wanted the flying knife that it dropped. But it did 250 damage to me in one hit. So, I had to teleport back home. I then mined a lot of titanium ore to make the full set of armor. The armor set gave me a 21 boost to my armor. On day 56, I didn't know what else to do, so I just built some more NPC houses. 
I went underground to search for some mimics, and then I finally found one, and it dropped the cross necklace for me. I needed better wings, so I went to the sky islands to kill some wyverns for the souls of flight. There's a really simple way of killing these things, and it's just to pretty much just dodge at the last second if you're using the shield of Cthulhu. I wasn't too sure of which kind of wings I wanted, so I decided to get the fairy wings. On day 58, I found a skeleton merchant, and then I bought a pet from him that reveals nearby treasures. While I was underground in the corruption, I farmed some souls of the night. On the night of day 58, I thought about doing a limit test and I wanted to see if I could actually kill the destroyer. But I was not close at all. My yo-yo sometimes wouldn't even reach its body and the damage I was doing, it was just way too little. When it reached 4.30 a.m., it despawned on me. From days 59 to 63, I spent the entire time killing hollowed mimics for the flying knife. But I was so unlucky, I've been getting everything except for the weapon that I wanted. I forgot that you were able to spawn them above the surface as well, so that's what I did to make it much easier for myself. Day 64, I still haven't gotten it. <laughs> and then the pirates appeared. These guys were way too strong, so I had to hole up in my little dome house, and I poured lava underneath myself to make the pirate invasion go by faster. I wanted to kill this parrot that was just looking at me through the door, but as soon as I opened up the door, a buccaneer shot at me and it did 143 damage. Taking care of the flying dutchman though was no problem because I could just stay in my house and just use my yo-yo to kill it. From day 65 to 68, I kept killing hollowed mimics until I finally got the flying knife. I then killed more fairies for the pixie dust. Having the flying knife, I fought the destroyer once again, and this time, it was a lot better. I didn't really have to worry about the flying probes because whenever I dealt damage with the flying knife, it would spawn titanium shards around me because of the armor set effect. I only had to worry about the probes when there were a lot of them. But yeah, this boss is pretty simple and there wasn't really anything I worried about. Uh, killing the probes also dropped health, so I just picked those up whenever I was slow. So after killing Destroyer, I made some light discs and it was a huge mistake. I never really used them ever again after a little bit. They were really bad and yeah, they just didn't do enough damage. I went back to hell and I killed Wallflesh another time to try and get a melee emblem, warrior emblem, but that didn't happen. Um, I actually got instead a mount, which is really cool. It's sort of like the unicorn mount, but it's more devilish. The item is called the Goat Skull, and it reminded me of the Hellrider movie. On day 70, I went to the underground jungle and I found the anklet of the wind, so I searched for an aglet and I combined those two to make lightning boots. So another pirate invasion started, but 
but with the flag knife, I was able to stay inside my house and attack from pretty much anywhere without getting hit at all. After I killed another flying dutchman, it dropped a really cool mount. It's sort of like a mini version of the flying dutchman itself. I made a really long bridge across the sky to prepare for the Skeletron Prime fight and also the twins. I also hooked up some heart statues that I found underground. Afterwards, I started making my castle. I didn't really want to leave it as it is with just the NPC housing, so that's why I worked on it. I had to stop midway though because I got a message saying that the air around me was getting colder, which meant that Skeletron Prime was about to spawn. So I drank some potions and got ready for the fight. At first, it didn't really seem like I was going to make it. With the flying knife, it wasn't doing enough damage, so I had to use my yo-yo instead. I only aimed for the head because if I tried focusing on all the other four limbs, then I don't think I would have made it. But I really wanted to kill the laser arm because that's pretty much the most annoying part of him. After killing Skeletron Prime, I went back to building my house, but then I got interrupted by a solar eclipse. I had to hold myself up because these guys were doing way too much damage. After the eclipse, I then spawned the twins. Like always, I aimed the green one first. So during the fight, I found an easier way to kill the boss. I pretty much just ran across the bridge and I used my flying knife on the bridge as well. I kept the flying knife as low as possible so it wouldn't go everywhere.
So after killing the twins, the next boss to fight is Plantera, but I wasn't going to do that just yet. I really wanted to finish my castle first. And building can take a really long time, especially for me who really sucks at building. So it pretty much took me the rest of the days to finish building my castle. I replaced the regular torches with some demon torches to make my castle look a bit more creepier. And I also added in some more lava. Some of my houses were corrupted, so I had to purify some of the corruption right next to it because it wouldn't allow NPCs to spawn in. I needed some decoration, so I went back down to hell and I kind of stole some <laughs> paintings and also some other demon torches as well. I also added in some purple flames which looked really cool. I was going to make my castle the main house, so I had to move some of the things out of my old house. And then I turned that into a farm. So we pretty much made it. Day 100 of Terraria Hardcore. I never really thought that it was possible for me to make it through all 100 days, but I did it. It took me a lot of failed attempts to actually get one successful run, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could drop a like, comment, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and yeah, let me know if you guys want to see 200 days in hardcore. I'll definitely make that if you guys want it. But yeah, peace guys.